Tesla just had their annual shareholder meeting for 2019. And I wanted just to quickly talk about the top takeaways that I heard during the whole presentation. Let's go. First, let's talk about sales and demand. Now, if you recall, there were lots of media outlets that were reporting the quarter over quarter numbers from Q4 of 2018 to Q1 of 2019 as a huge loss, a huge drop for Tesla. And if you did it that way, that would be true. It would drop dramatically. But the real way that you're supposed to look at these numbers or that you typically look at these numbers is year over year. So if you look at Q1 of 2019 versus Q1 of 2018, Tesla was actually up 110%. So despite this kind of objective success here that Tesla was, the media kept reporting on this narrative of a huge drop. And that led to investors kind of getting spooked, thinking that customers no longer wanted these vehicles. They, they call it customer demand is the term. Well, Elon wanted to address that in this presentation, and I think he did pretty directly. So uh, we get this question a lot, um, and that's... Uh uh, I want to be clear, there is not a demand problem, <laughs> okay? It's absolutely not. Um, the, we, we've, uh, sales are, have far exceeded uh, production, and production has been pretty good. And a big point that he had in this presentation about this that surprised me was that 90% of the new orders are not from reservation holders. That means that they're reaching an entirely new market of people that are coming into the Tesla family for the very first time. These aren't people that have been sitting on a reservation for a couple of years now. This is just an entirely new group. And the mix of the cars that those people are trading in was also surprising. So the trade-in analysis shows that 63% of the vehicles that people are trading in for Teslas are non-premium vehicles. This is a giant market size of tens of millions of customers. There are 12% that were these mid-sized premium sedans and 25% were, were these other premium sedans. All told, this just basically paints the picture that Tesla has a massive market potential based on the data that they're getting from people trading in their vehicles. P.S. Kudos to Tesla for not using a pie chart there. Now, if you look forward to the Model Y, that has about a two and a half times bigger market than the Model 3. Now, Elon actually addressed this as well, and he said something kind of shocking. And so we, th we think probably demand for the Model Y will be greater than the uh, S3 and X combined. So yeah, things are looking good from the customer demand standpoint. Tesla is not even able to keep up with demand. 90% of the orders are from non-reservation holders. It's a whole new group of people. And they're upgrading from these regular, kind of maybe a Honda Civic, Toyota, Camry, that kind of thing, to any of the Teslas, which are all considered premium vehicles. So really, it is just a dramatic shift away from the cheap economy, I don't care, just A to B kind of transportation, to not luxury, but a new expectation, the new normal that Tesla is setting with their vehicles, which I think is something that if you own one or you've ever been in one, kind of just really hits you immediately from your first ride. Now, the other thing that stood out to me was the talk of the Tesla truck. This is kind of the hottest topic right now in the Tesla community. Everyone that I know that I meet, I was just down in Mexico, met a, met a nice couple at the place we were staying. First question, when are they going to release the truck? So lots of people, I think, are clamoring for the truck. Now, the presentation didn't have a lot of new info. Elon did mention that they're hoping to do the unveiling late summer. So in Elon terms, fall to winter at best, hopefully in 2019. I'm pretty confident it'll be 2019. I'll, I'll put my money on October. Seems to be a good month to unveil new, new vehicles here. So other than that, there really wasn't much. But on a recent podcast for Ride the Lightning, Elon was on there with Ryan McCaffrey. It's a great show. I'll put a link to it. You should go check it out. He did talk a little bit about the truck. We don't want it to be really expensive. Um, you know, I think it's got to start at less than $50,000. It's got to be like $49,000 starting yeah. price max, you know, as, 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 and ideally less. Um, yeah, even I think he just made a lot of people really happy who are interested in the truck by saying that. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's just it just can't be unaffordable. You know, it's just got to be it's got to be something that's that's affordable. So um, now there'll be versions of the car that are more expensive, but or the truck that are more expensive. But the the you've got to be able to get a a really great truck for forty nine thousand dollars or less, and and. Um, 
you know, it's, it's just got to have incredible functionality from a load carrying standpoint. Look, look amazing. Um, but it 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 won't look like a, a normal truck. So it's it's going to look pretty sci-fi. Um, that means it's, it's not going to be for everyone. Like if somebody just wants to have a truck that just looks like trucks have looked for you know the last twenty years, then thirty years or forty years, then this probably isn't for them. Yeah. But, but this this is it's going to be a truck that is more capable than other trucks. Like it'll be a better truck than 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 you know say an equivalent. Like you know, the goal is like be a, be a better truck than F one fifty in terms of truck like functionality, um, and be a better sports car than a standard nine eleven. <laughs> That's the aspiration. And if you are to believe the tweets that we had previously, here are the specs and kind of what we know about the truck. Just to refresh your memory, the Tesla truck will have a range of between four to five hundred miles. It will have a towing capacity of three hundred thousand pounds, which may sound crazy, but if you recall, the Model X towed a jumbo jet. So something that is actually made to tow vehicles would, you know, this could, could very well be true. It will be a design that is new and not like anything else out there. So they're not going to just copy what the other folks have done. They're going to come with a totally fresh design. All we have so far is this little outline here. It's the front of the truck. And other than that, just basically people have been going crazy, speculating what this thing will look like. From the previous tweets, we also know that this will be a six-seater dual motor all-wheel drive, which makes a whole lot of sense. It will have 250 volt connections in the bed for heavy duty tools, and it will also have an air compressor. Now, the earliest I think they could realistically deliver this would be 2021. I don't think that they have capacity at Fremont to add this. They're also right in the middle of getting the Model Y, which they're already taking reservations for. So the Model Y, in terms of production right now, has to be the priority. So this will likely be at a new facility, either at Gigafactory 1, or maybe they can take over an older plant, whatever. So realistically, in my book, I think 2021, spring, summer is when you'll start to see these actually hit the streets. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy to be wrong on there. Now, the last thing I really wanted to talk about, but I didn't hear anything about, was the Tesla Roadster. Uh, Elon did talk about it on the Ride the Lightning podcast, and the point he made was, you know, that it's it's not really designed as a, a critical piece of the company's success, right? The mission is to transition people to sustainable energy. The Roadster is more of a of of, of a left hook to the gas cars, you know, and the performance, the supercars out there trying to show that electric cars can do it. So they don't need that to succeed in order for the company to succeed. So chances are that, you know, we won't hear much about that until it's really time for it to uh, to get released. Now, hopefully that will be in 2020. Um, I'm really hoping that we'll start to see more info. Uh, Maybe we'll have some more test drives and all that. Uh, But these cars do tend to show up at these events. So I think we'll just see these little leaks and stuff. Um, until you know, we know more about that. I was really hoping for something there, but you know, it, it's all good. Uh, I understand the focus is really on these other bigger things because that is what's going to drive us forward here. So that's it for this. Just a quick little recap. Let me know what your thoughts. If I missed anything, happy to comment on it. I'll kind of jump down there for the next hour or so uh, and chat with you guys. And other than that, thanks for watching. Don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. Do you like data? Maybe you want to make a career out of it? Check out my free course at ftdacademy.com and kickstart your data professional career today.